Good afternoon, welcome to Viscount Leisure. My name is Charles, and I'm going to take you on a tutorial video around this Avanti 840 we've got here. Just make sure that we're aware of how everything attaches to the van and how everything is put onto it and how everything operates, okay? Um, so we'll start at the door. All right, obviously, this is our way into the caravan. It's, uh, it's pinned back at the moment, as you can see, on this retaining clip here. All right, to release that, we'll just use that uh, lever there, and that retains the door. Split door here as well, okay? So it is a stable door, so we can close half and leave the other half open. Pane window here with a blind so we can black out this cabin at night, okay? Uh, and when we're inside the caravan, we lift the, um, this up to the red dot to lock it from the inside. And then we use it as a normal handle, okay, when we're going forward. Right, coming rounds, each corner of the van has a corner steady, all right? That stables the van when we're inside it, all right? Um, what we don't do is level our van on these corner steadies. We use our jockey wheel just there, so we can wind it up and down to level the caravan front to back. Once we're level using a spirit level, okay, front to back, um, we then can put down our steadies. Most sites you'll find will be level side to side. If they're not, you may need some leveling wedges to reverse up onto just to get that side level as well. Once you're level, put your um, put your levels, your steadies down on each corner, okay, and that will then stop the van wobbling around when you're walking around in it. So if we try and level with those, we can damage the bottom of the caravan and the legs themselves. So please don't do that. Um, wind them down through the hole here there is a nut okay and in your front locker here you have your winding handle there which will wind down your um, your legs okay inside the locker here we have our gas bottle all right so we're set up for running on propane at the moment i've got my test bottle in here you will need a bottle of gas to, to operate your van properly okay um the, when we're traveling we must make sure that our bottles are strapped in we have these straps here so we do make sure that our bottles are fully strapped in and leave them strapped in all the time and also make sure that the bottles are turned off when we're traveling we use the nut on the top screw it down that will turn off the bottle but obviously when we arrive to the site we open it all the way up that will allow the gas flow to come through our pigtail okay this pigtail goes into our regulator here okay this is a hand tight wheel into the side of the um, of the gas ball, right? It's a thread that goes in on an opposite thread, so it's not lefty loosey righty tighty, it's the other way around, okay? So we turn that in hand tight, there's a nice rubber seal on the end, and that keeps it in place and keeps the seal into the gas ball. That then comes into our regulator, okay, and that then pr provides um, the right gas pressure for the working gas pressure for the van that goes through to all of our appliances. We've obviously got two um, gas hoses coming in here. You can see the end of one of the gas hoses here with the rubber seal. So we can have two bottles and this changeover valve, if we move this and point to which bottle we want to use, that will then switch it over to the correct bottle. In here as well, you can see we've got a um, uh, some waste hose. I'll show you where that goes. And also a hitch cover in there for you as well. Again, along with our winding handle as well. Right. Having a look at the hitch here, we'll have a quick look at this now because we will do a full hitch up with you when you pick the van up. This is our jockey wheel. This is how we can raise and lower the front of the van. Okay, this is our handbrake in the upwards position at the moment and we push that down to release. We have our breakaway cable which goes around our tow ball or clips onto our tow bar um, and that then stops, uh, pulls our handbrake on if for any reason we do get detached. Alco hitch head stabiliser here, so we do need an Alco uh, compatible tow ball. Uh, if you need to know any more about that, please do ask. It's just a slightly different spacing to a normal one. Uh, can be used with other trailers, but it's just to incorporate the large hitch head on here as well. If you've got an existing tow ball um, which has grease on it, you do need to make sure that's all removed. Uh, that does not do the pads in here any favours at all. In fact, it makes it null and void, to be fair. Um, and also, if it's a new tow, tow ball and you've got black paint on it, we do need to be removing that paint to bare metal. That way, this will operate better. Um, it doesn't like a smooth surface, okay? We're also running on 13-pin electrics there as well. So do make sure you either got that on your car or you've got the right adapter for making things work. Coming around, got my test barrel here with the water in it to, uh, to go into the van. This is how we get fresh water into the van. So you fill up your barrel, bring it to your van, okay? Drop in your water pump, submersible water pump, goes into the bottom of the barrel, and this then plugs into the side of the caravan, okay? And then once it's in, we push this down to 90 degrees, and that then locks that in place, all right? Once that's in place there, make sure it's at the bottom of the barrel so it's sucking water from the barrel, the bottom of the barrel. Uh, we're then all ready to um, start priming the van with water. Over here, this is where our power comes into the van. 12 volt is provided from a battery and our 240 is provided by a mains cable. You will need both of these things. Okay, this is my test battery I've got here just to make sure everything's working correctly on the 12 volt side inside the van. All right. Also, 
you'll need a mains lead as well so if you are on a site where you have access to mains power you can plug into the van here and that will then provide you the power through to the van underneath here is our boiler flue okay our boiler situation just behind here nothing you need to do with it i can feel the warm air coming out where i've got the uh, boiler running on gas at the moment so that's purely a vent for the boiler very much like you would have on the outside of your house okay okay coming on around this is where our um gray water comes out of the van all right so this is where water comes out from our taps and from our showers this one comes from the bath the kitchen this one comes from the bathroom that's what our great pipe is for in the front locker fits perfectly into these slots which you then drop into your waste master that you will need to uh, collect all of your waste water that comes out of the van coming along here is our toilet side of things all right uh, flush tank is above here we have a separate tank for our flush water all right that goes into here we use a pink chemical in there which you can buy in the shop and then we dilute that with water and that is purely the water that goes just for the flush of the toilet uh, that pink fluid makes things smell nice keeps the pump lubricated and all that kind of thing as well this goes into our locker where we keep our all right where we keep our toilet cassette okay set for toilet cassette once it's full a light will illuminate inside the van to let you know we pull the whole unit out by lifting up and pulling okay out she comes she's on wheels as you can see and we have an extendable handle here a bit like a suitcase which we can take down to our service point okay there'll be a certain point on site where we empty these all right they will be quite clearly labeled um but when we do so we move this out take the cap off okay press the orange button that then releases all the air pressure inside the unit we empty everything out okay and then once we've done that we have to reprime the unit with blue chemical all right again you can buy that in the shop you mix that with a bit of water into here and uh, reprime that that blue chemical breaks everything down inside the unit and just makes it easier and everything smelling nice when we're also emptying the toilet as well okay um so very important that we do that reprime it when we are not using our van we must make sure we're leaving it empty so leave the toilet empty also leave our flush tank empty we have a little nozzle we can pull down here pull the pin out the cap out at the end and that will then drain our tank down we won't want to leave any water in our van it's just good practice to leave it completely dry that way if we get any freezing weather or anything like that we're not going to damage anything at all all right right moving around the van grab handles and lights on the back don't forget you will need a number plate depicting your car for when you are towing okay uh, and we're going to come around here we have another locker here underneath the bed this means we can get inside and put stuff under our bed without having to drag things through the van fridge vents okay we've got a large fridge on board it pulls the cold air in from the bottom expels the hot air out of the top it does use heat to cool so that's how that operates nothing you need to do with it just so that you know what they are okay um, but they are your fridge vents okay right coming inside the van we now need to have a look at how we can plumb up our van we know we've plugged our water into the outside we've turned on our gas and we've also got our waste master set up ready to collect any gray water that comes out of the van what i will do is just come and turn off my stereo here which is running to do that i'm just going to press that source button and hold it down okay and that's turned it off right first things first when you get to your van what you'll find is how you should have left your how you should have left your van will be um with all of your taps left open okay the reason for that that allows air to travel around the system and if we get any freezing weather then nothing's going to get damaged so we're going to come in we're going to close all of our taps in the bathroom and in the kitchen and we're also going to uh, close our boiler drain valve which is how we drain down our system when we finish with it okay so what i'm going to do is just come under the seat here okay and just lift the seat up here what you'll see is this yellow switch here okay we can you'll, it will be in this position here all right and what we want to do is just flick it all the way over so it's pointing towards the pipe that is now closed so when we start putting water into the van it won't just spill down onto the floor it will actually go through our boiler and do things in bits and pieces there here are your infill cushions as well for your for your makeup bed here we'll talk about that in a little bit okay once you close that we'll then want to start priming our system we're going to come and turn on our main panel here okay we've got the three switches across the top turn all those on this one the middle one does all your lights okay this one here is your master so that will turn everything on and this one here does your awning light i think yes 
Okay, so you can leave that one off actually. So just these two, main master, and this is our lights. I'm then gonna wake the panel up by pressing the middle button, and I'm gonna come and turn on my water pump by pressing on the touch screen and press water pump, and it says ready to go. Then I'm gonna come to my taps, all right? So we wanna purge the water through. If you can imagine, my boil is empty, it's just got air in it. So is the rest of the system. We need to push all that air out and replace it with water. So I'm gonna turn it over to hot. All right, do the hot leg first, turn the tap on. You can see I've got a constant flow of water here because I've already purged my system. What you will get is a lot of coughing and spluttering and all sorts of noises whilst it pushes all the air out the system. You need to leave it doing that until it gets a nice flow of water like so, all right? You need to do that in here, okay? You also need to do that in your bathroom and your shower to make sure we get rid of all the air out the system. Even if you're not planning on using your shower, still purge it through that way there's no air left in the system okay that's quite important all right so we come in here and make sure as you can see a bit of coughing and sputtering there we go that's now running once we've done the hot leg we could do the same with the cold turn it over to cold turn the tap on again it will cough and sputter less because we haven't got a boiler to fill up first um, but nevertheless it will cough and sputter a bit as it replaces the air throughout the tubing and the pipes in the system okay then once it's all up and running we are happy to um, to move on then what we're going to do is we're going to come to our main panel, all right, and we're going to turn on our hot water. Now, the hot water, if I just turn it all off for the minute, okay, you'll come in and you will just see this is not illuminated. So come to the tap, I'm going to press the tap, and I've got a couple of options, all right? I've got a frost setting as well here, so that if I've got water in the system and I haven't got it on, I can put that on and it will um, stop, the, um, stop the boiler freezing, okay? I've also got eco mode, all right, which will heat the water up to about 40 degrees. I can also I can also put it on to um, two kilowatts of power there. So if I'm plugged into mains, that will then power up my boiler on mains alone and heat the water up. Okay, and that will go up to about sixty degrees. What I can do is also boost it. All right. So if I press, if I want to to heat the water up really quickly, I'm going to have a couple of back to back showers. I can press this one. That will boost it to three kilowatts worth of power. Again, for half an hour, you can see the count down there. All right. But I'm not going to do that for the moment. Or if I am off grid and I don't have access to mains power, I can boost it for half an hour on the gas. So I will put that on. That will then heat the water up in the boiler for half an hour, just purely on the gas. But bear in mind, once that's cut count down you would need to come and press it again if you want access to hot water okay um, so that's how our hot water works again if you're plugged into mains your main setting will just be to leave it as you see it there with the two kilowatts of power from a heating point of view i'm not going to have heating on at the minute because it is quite warm in here but what i can do is select what kind of power i want do i want it on gas do i want it one kilowatt of power two kilowatts of power or three kilowatts of power Right, I could put it on two. Depending on what site I'm on, you can have access to different amounts of power. Okay, check with your site warden, or you'll soon know if you keep tripping your van out that you're trying to use too much power on that particular site. All right. I then select the temperature I want it to be. All right, just using the touch screen here. If I'm off grid and I don't have mains power, I can run it again just on gas. All right, and I can select the temperature that I want it to be. Again, I can run it on a mixture of the two. If it's really cold outside and I want to heat the van up really quickly, I can do it on both. Or I can have the heating completely off if it's summertime. I can also put my fan on, all right, and that will then blow, because it is a blown air system. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is now on. And then I'll run it on two kilowatts of power, and then that will then um, keep the van at the temperature that I want it to be. I've also got a frost setting as well, so that'll just keep it above a freezing temperature inside the van, all right. I've also got um, my battery voltage there as well telling me it's 13.1 volts and that i'm also plugged into mains so at third that's telling me that my battery is charging okay um so that is basically your thing so this is my the heating all right what power do i want do i want my fan on and what temperature do i want it on okay and then hot water eco normal or boost okay so that's our main panel uh, let's move on and have a quick look around. We know how all of our beds work. Um, we'll have looked at that, but just so that you know, these pull out from here, okay? We then drop our cushions into place. I would always suggest turning them over so that we're on the flat side here. You can see it does say sleep on this side. Okay, that clamps for all of the cushions, but also you've got a bolster here. Turn this over, but also have the bolster on the side nearest the window. That way you get a nice flat surface traveling all the way across, all right? The windows all open in the same way, okay? 
one, two, three, four, and we can push the window open. We then have screws here, which we can screw in. Okay, and that will then hold the window in place um, when the window is open. All right. We also have a breather setting, so we can lock the window with it slightly open. All right, just to get some airflow through, but still have some security as well. Right. Uh, coming up into here, you can see we've got a TV aerial. All right, this is a directional aerial, and I'll have our booster box over here, which is on. Uh, I would suggest just leaving it on, to be honest with you, because it will go on and off with your uh, master switch. But you want to extend your aerial over the top, you unscrew the locking nut, and you push it up over the top of the van, and then lock it back into place, all right? That then twists and turns, and we can change the plane of the aerial, okay? Not forgetting, of course, when we finished, that we want to make sure that we're pulling our aerial down. Um, so we're not bashing trees and things like that when we're driving along. Okay, individual reading lights here, which are individually switched. Okay, one there and another one here. Down the side here, we've got a 240 volt power socket, a TV socket and a 12 volt socket. All right, not forgetting, of course, our 240 volt domestic plug sockets are only active when we are plugged into our mains. All right, all the windows that open have fly screens and all the windows have blinds so that we can black the cabin out. They are on a, a ratchet, so, okay, so we don't have to have it all the way down. All right. So they work all the same all the way around, apart from up here. This window doesn't open, so it does just have a, just a blind. All right. Okay. Uh, we have our central um, table here, which also has a coffee table. And we have two drawers here as well. Here are all your book packs, so all the instructions and everything for the van are also in there, um, which kind of back up everything that I'm saying to you as well. More storage underneath there. And again, underneath here, we've got a bit of storage, but also access to our um, PSU, our power supply unit, okay? Now we know we've got two different types of power coming in. 12 volt, which is from our fuses down here. You can see that it tells you what each fuse does. So if you do need to change a fuse, this is where you're gonna be coming to to do that from the 12 volt side of things. If we're running mains power, okay, and we're plugged in, this is where that comes into, very much like your fuse box at home. Okay, so we have these trip switches here. It tells us what they do. This is for our fridge and charger, water heater, boiler, and our domestic sockets. This here is our RCD, our main isolator for the van. All right, um, so that's where the power's first hitting the van. Um, if, if you're having a problem getting 240 volt into the van, you can't get your domestic plug sockets to work or you can't get your fridge uh, to, to work on mains power, nine times out of 10, it's not a problem with your van. It'll be a problem with where you're plugged into, okay? Um, so they also have trip switches in them on site as well. So it may be worth checking that. But we have a little button here with a T on it. You can see that, all right, it's got a T. If we press that and nothing happens, this doesn't drop. That tells me there's no power coming to the unit, so the problem is external. If you press that button and this trips, then I know I've got power coming to this unit, all right? So that's a good little test to make sure that you have got power coming to that unit. Okay, let's have a quick look in here to make sure we're not missing anything. Good. Okay, we have another... Um, Sleeping area here, okay, so we have a telescopic table that goes down. We have a handle here that does that, so we can push that to one side and then push the whole table down, and that will sit then in, onto, these, um, onto these bits here all around. It is easier to remove the cushions when you do it, okay, um, and that will allow the table to drop down and sit in the bits where it's supposed to be sitting. We then have these flaps, all right, which lift up, okay, on both sides, um, and we can then um, make it into a bed all right um so that is how that operates as a bed um and then we got the infill cushions that we saw underneath that help fill in the gaps and then to put these down we push up one and we push up two easy to do with, uh, bear with me a second <laughs> Bit of a two-handed job that one um so that is how that operates there as well okay um so that is how the bed makes up again in the in the uh, the manuals it is a sort of a, a map of how that should look as well all right we've got our um skylight here this one operates slightly differently to others where you just pull down on a spring and then pull back okay that then allows the air to flow in and then we can just have it as high and low as we want again blinds and fly screens for that one there as well individual light switches down there okay for the for the lights as we can see 
Coming into the kitchen area, we talked about our tap, mixer tap, hot and cold running water. All right, that's coming from our boiler. This has been on overnight, so we should have a nice bit of hot water coming through there. Yeah, that is to the point where I can't actually touch that, so we know that's working quite nicely. All right, two 240 volt sockets, and also our light switch for the down lights in the kitchen here as well. We've got lots of drawers and lots of cupboards. We'll just open them up to make sure that we're not missing anything. We've got your um, sink cover and your draining board here in there as well. More storage. Underneath here, we have our gas isolators, one for the fridge and one for the cooker. All right, if you do need to isolate either one of these units from the gas side of things, that is where you would come to. From a cooker, um, we've got a three gas burner hob and also a um, electric hot plate. The electric hot plate is only operational when we are plugged into our mains and we have mains power, okay? Um, but nice little thing to have if we are not, um, if we've paid for our electric already, we might as well uh, use our electric rather than using up our gas. That operates from this side here, okay? Um, as you can see, they're all the pictures of what does what is on there all right so i'll show you how we light a hob i mean it's all pretty self-explanatory but we turn it on hold it down we use the igniter here okay and there we go that is lit obviously you need to make sure you've turned your gas bottle on in the front it's always good just to come and light a couple of hobs when you first turn on your gas again a bit like we purge the water system just purges the gas system and helps when we're trying to light other things on gas as well the grill again is the highlighted one at the top there so we hold that down press the button there we go, and that lights the grill. All right, and then we light the oven exactly the same. This one here, hold it down, press the button. There we go, and that's all lit in there for us, okay? Then we just select the temperature that we want and we're cooking. Bear in mind, this isn't a domestic oven, all right? So things will take a little bit longer than you expect to cook, all right? So just bear that in mind when you're planning your dinners and things like that. Microwave, okay, domestic microwave. I'm not gonna teach you how to use a microwave, but I will, will say is the microwave plate, you do need to be removing that when you are traveling, okay? You will find this in your book pack. Uh, that's where we tend to keep them. Um, but the amount of times we see these smashed on the floor with dented floors or doors or whatever, where they've flown out the van, they, don't, they do bounce around in the back here, okay? So like that, you want this in that, and also your, um, your hob down as well okay okay let's talk about the fridge nice big dometic three-way fridge here okay works on three lots of power we're plugged into mains at the moment so you can see that it's illuminated with the plug there that tells me it is running on 240 volt power i can change my temperature of the fridge by pressing this button here okay very much like my fridge at home i can change the temperature within it if I don't have mains power, I can run the fridge on gas. So what I would do is press my gas button. You will then hear a tick, 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 and then you will hear it fire up, okay? Um, that will then light the fridge on gas. If it doesn't work or it has goes out for any reason, it will alarm and tell you that it's not working properly. Again, the same if, you, um, if it loses its 240 volt connection as well. We've also got a picture of a battery here. That doesn't mean that we can run the fridge off of the leisure battery. What that means is we can run it off of the 12 volt system of our car when we're traveling. So you'd need to have the right um, connection to your car, the 12 volt set up on your car electrics. Okay. Um, and then what we do is press the button I mean, it won't let me do it. There we go. It's alarming because I'm not connected to a car at the minute, but that would work if we were plugged in. Okay. Just bear in mind though, that won't chill the fridge down. It's not powerful enough. So if you want to use that feature, you need to chill the fridge down first, then switch over there and that will maintain the temperature while you're traveling. Okay, it's not powerful enough to cool it down. So just bear that in mind as well. We open the fridge by pressing down the button here and just pulling it out. Nice large fridge. This has been on overnight, so it's really cold in there. And also my freezer section. Let's have a look. We put that on with some um, ice in there last night and that's all frozen. So we're pretty happy with that. We'll just melt that with our hot water here, just to make sure that we're happy we've got hot water. Okay. And there we go, that is how our fridge works. There we go. We've got rid of our ice already, let's just go show how hot that water was. Um, okay. In our bedroom, you can see we've got a, a nice thick mattress here. We've also got our light switch just there as well. Individual light switch for the down lighters or the reading lights in the corners. Okay. And we've also got a TV bracket here that we could use as well. And the sockets and everything dictating to that are saturated over there. All right. Um, we can get underneath our bed for storage. All right. Just by lifting it up. 
Okay, you can see you've got all your carpets underneath there. You can also see you've got access outside there as well. Another two sockets situated down there. And you can also see one of the vents there where our heating comes from. In here, you can see you've got your dining table there. Obviously, you can the freestanding table that goes when we're eating over there or in your awning or, of course, wherever you want to put it. Okay. In the bathroom, again, hot and cold running water in here as well, both in here and in the shower. All right, so that's how that all operates. Um, this is locked back at the moment for traveling. You can see all we have to do is lift that up out of the way like so, and then we can open and close our shower door. The reason it does that is just to stop it banging around the place when we are traveling. Light switch is situated just up here. Okay, same skylight system that we've got in the bedroom and the lounge as well. Um, toilet, okay, so we've talked about our toilet from the outside. Our flush tank is situated in here and our cassette is situated in here. So we use the toilet in exactly the normal way. We press the flush button, there we go. You can see we've got our pink fluid coming out there, okay? And then we have to then empty that into the cassette below. We do that by opening the, the gate here all the way over. Everything drops down into the cassette, as you can see there. Okay, and then we pull this all the way across, making sure this is all the way, because that's what creates the seal and keeps all the smells and the nastiness inside the cassette, all right? Also, this needs to be all the way across, because if you do try and move your, take your cassette out and that isn't all the way across, you won't be able to pull it out, all right? This here, when that's illuminated, that's where it's telling you you need to change your cassette. Don't ignore it, otherwise you can make a right mess in the compartment where the cassette is, all right? Right, hopefully that's made sense so far. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll do the reverse of sort of, we've finished our holiday and we're gonna start packing the van down, all right? So what I'm gonna do, firstly, I'm gonna come and turn off my fridge. You may not do this because you may well connect it to your car, all right? I'm then gonna to come to my panel here and I'm gonna turn everything off, one, two, and three, and that's turned off everything um, from the 12 volt side of things as well. We're then gonna start draining our tanks and, uh, and everything down. So again, I need to come under my seat here. All right, and we need to open our boiler drain valve, okay? So that is the yellow one that we saw earlier. All right, and we're just gonna switch that to one side and that will then, we'll see it from the outside, but it will start draining water down to ground outside. Once we've done that, what you also want to do is you wanna leave all your taps open. The reason that we do that, and it's very good practice to do it, is you wanna leave it between hot and cold as well. That's very important. Um, for, as one example, if freeze, for instance, we have freezing weather and we've left water in the system, water expands when it freezes, and if it's got nowhere to go, it's gonna damage your taps. It's also gonna damage your pipe work and everything like that. Next time you come to plumb your van up, you're gonna end up with water spraying everywhere, all right? You can hear all the water draining back down, that's allowing air through the system. And if we leave it between hot and cold, that allows the air between the hot leg and the cold leg of the system. That way we're never gonna have any problems. So if you can get the habit in leaving no water in your van, that's gonna be best for it in the long run. That includes the toilet, the, the tank, um, the, the flush tank, your boiler, the lot, okay? Now what we'll do is we'll start detaching everything from the outside of the van. All right, I'm gonna turn off my gas bottle. Screw down, as remember that, turns off our gas bottle. But what I'm gonna do is remove this one as it's my test gas bottle anyway. Okay, so again, as we said, it's a hand tight wheel, no need for any spanners, and it's an opposite thread. So I just undo that. And that allows that to fall clear of the van. Now what I'm gonna do is pull my gas bottle out and out the way. Then what you're gonna start wanting to do is removing your water bottle, your water barrel, your waste master and all your pipe work and put that wherever you wanna keep it, in the front locker, the waste master and the aqua roll. Um, a lot of people put in the shower, okay, just to stop it rolling around the van. I'm then gonna remove my pump. I'm gonna give it a good shake off, all right, just to get all the excess water out of it. And I am then gonna put that in my front locker and that's where you will be finding that, okay? Move my barrels out of the way. Close up my lid. There we go. Then what I'm gonna do is remove my power lead. Now, my colleagues already told me he's removed it from our power socket. You always wanna remove it so that you're not walking around with a live wire, okay? So, 
if it's unplugged from the mains and I've, I'm now not walking around with a live wire, okay? Also, a little tip with your mains lead. All right, if you've got it on a barrel or on a drum and it's all curled up nice and neatly, all right, and you don't need all of it, don't leave it on the floor curled up. If it's a hot day, um, it can melt, okay? This get very hot if you leave them coiled up like that with the electricity going through it. So flake it out, even if it's under the van, so it doesn't look too messy, but that is what you want to be doing, all right? Just good practice. Then we're gonna clear away our, our waste masters and everything like that. And we are also gonna, I'm gonna remove my battery as well in a minute, because uh, that is my test one. But that is it really for your van. Um, as I say, everything is backed up in your mains handbook. Uh, and uh, you know we're on the end of the phone as well. Before you go, don't forget you do need to put up your corner steadies and remove your handbrake before you um, go off in your car. Hope that's been useful and we'll look forward to seeing you at collection. Thank you. <laughs>